Hey guys, this is Nikki T. Today we're going to look at the new NXL Prague Open layout. Come on, step into my office and let's get you going. So the event is going to be held in July in Prague, which is in the Czech Republic. NXL Europe just launched this layout this week and immediately it looks like it's going to be a lot of fun to play. Let's get stuck in. Let's start with a little overhead view and you can very clearly see that initially the snake is a cluster of very of a lot of bunkers in very close proximity. You can get stuck in straight away once you're in there though there's a lot of work to be done so many options so so many um opportunities in there in the sense of you know you the harder and faster that you go at it potentially the greater the rewards if the other team can't react and you know stop the flow of bodies leaving the field so to speak d side looks a little bit more predictable Easy to get into the big D1 off the break. D2 being smaller, slightly harder work. Potential stop off on the way to D3 slash D4. Relatively straightforward to make it past the 50. In the sense of your D4 to their D4 move is possible. Especially if you're using those bricks on the inside. Small windows to cross through etc etc centers kind of pushed out if that makes sense in that there's nothing directly on the center 50 length and width wise everything center 50 wise in terms of end to end is pushed out towards the tape lines no no real corner bunkers per se. I think the snake side has a couple of line bunkers, but you know, you can see they're situated the tall cakes on the 30 yard line. D side has nothing on the tape other than the D4s, which are hovering around that 50 yard line. So this is going to be super interesting. Super interesting. I'm looking forward to it a lot. Let's get stuck in. So from the start gate, let's get a true start gate picture. If you are stood at that start gate, you have an immediate shot over the back center that gives you an opportunity to catch anybody going out to the D side before they get to the big stand up can that you can see just to the left of the Go Sports logo on the back line you have a smaller slash tighter window to catch anybody trying to make it out snake side still possible to you know to to get somebody who's sloppy but if you look at that window that is to the right of the start gate and also let's see if i can navigate my way there for you and also this window here this little pocket yeah this area and it's really what you see here between this tall tower and the start gate slash home back center bunker. And it's a sliver. You'll catch people there, sure. Oh, I don't know why we've rocketed up. Let's see. We must have bounced off a bunker. You'll catch people standing there. But if anybody's really looking to to sprint out wide snake side. Imagine they've got their marker touching and their dynamic going snake side. The, all you're likely to see is an arm and a marker in that window because they'll be edging out, looking to get a, a fast start and really make it out wide. I think there is the potential for paint to be coming in at this height. So, you know, hovering all around that back center but I think more often than not, this is going to be a kind of one of those 
crouch down at the start gate, get that sneaky shot. So this is probably going to be your view. Off the bat, bam, go sports logo, or bam, edging into that tall tower. I don't think anyone's going to be, or if anybody does try a bit more of an upright position, I think they're going to pay the price quite quickly in the sense of that's a, that's a tough task. Tough task to really get good kills and live because you're compromised by paint coming in over the top of that bunker. Let's look at D side first, then we'll go back to the snake side. So breaking out D side, yes, there's a little corridor to get through off the bat. Let me just get, see if I can get rid of this. There we go. Yes, there's a little corridor to get through off the bat. And that's this area here that you're standing in. Once you're through that, though, you've got to be a little bit mindful of if anybody broke out to the tall tower on the snake side, either of the tall towers, because they've then got these cross shots to kill anyone filling up, delaying and filling up to the can, delaying and then spreading out wide behind the can. So just be mindful if you're gonna if you're gonna play this pocket, be as decisive as you can and as disciplined as you can. There's no issue. I'm going to stay here for a couple of seconds and then go. The issue is if you extend that stay too long, you'll pay the price. Coming out to this small temple, I feel you can make it in there easily enough because I don't feel that this shot from the can is a great shot, especially with the added momentum of players running in there. You might get clipped every now and again, but I think it's super low percentage a lot of things have to align for for that to become a consistent for that to become a kill let alone a consistent kill so i feel that's a very makeable bunker off the bat d1 i feel this is super attainable for you know a solid bunker on the d side because of the lack of the traditional back corner on this particular layout You'll get a lot of players coming in here, you know, and it's a, sure, it's a scramble to get in there. But then once you're in, I mean, look at the, look at the shots you've got. There's a great crossfield shot onto the, the wider of the two towers on the snake side. And you've also got a, decent angle let's actually get stuck in here you got a decent angle on anybody delaying out to the corner so that's through this lane going um to the ghost sports logo between the pin and the tower and a wider angle at the ghost sports logo on the right the two ghost sports logos on the right actually getting into the snake and up to that brick on the 40. So although you can't see the snake in the truest sense of the of that phrase from this bunker, you got some good shots to the access to the snake. Snake's slightly wider, just there. So really you can control the entry to the snake from the D1, which is the artificial corner bunker, if you like. It's the widest backline bunker on the D side. Now, coming out of here, looking to get out of D1 into D2, you got an immediate battle with that temple, the inside temple on the back line. You got a wider battle. If they've managed to get wide, then you're getting pinched from the D side as well. So whilst it's attainable off the break, I feel it's going to be very interesting to see who can who can get small and who can get smart in this d1 bunker if it is a short stop off and you just is just like a layover to get into d2 and d3 then you know i think that's perfectly feasible especially if all hell's breaking loose on the snake side 
and that temple isn't focused on containing you if you're in the D1. So when you make it out, you got the option straight into D2. And if that is a straight into D2, let's look at what's going to chop you up on your entry in there. From the far side, not a lot. Not a lot given the, the short window in that you're leaving a big bunker in D1 and going into a small bunker. Players looking for that crossfield kill aren't going to have the luxury of seeing you leave here early. If we look at, if we try and get the best possible angle to show you what I mean. So when you're leaving here, you're relatively safe. Coming out is just, it's just the initial departure. Now, it doesn't show it super clearly because the snake one blends in a little bit with that mini win. So let me just go over to that side of the field and show you guys what I mean is this guy here. What? This guy. This guy sitting in here, if he's shooting infield, can see you leaving your D1. So let's get back to that D1. Okay. Here's our angle. So there we go. See him across the field there. If you can get past that into this area, that snake player can no longer shoot you unless they've moved further upfield into, in essence, the snake. Oh, I guess it'll be the snake three, the second mini win. Fast and low. Fast, low and decisive. Once you're there, see what you've got. You got battles on the inside, but if you're gonna battle inside, you open yourself up to being shot from the snake. Let's see if we can get the tightest possible in bunker position to show you. Okay, that's your battle on the inside. So the right hand side of this profile and you're battling every, every snake position up to the 50. It's the ball from hell scenario is also if they don't shoot you, you completely lose them if they choose to play tape side and move further upfield. If we look tape side, this is what you're battling with. Brick, wedge, D1, D2, D3, D4, your D4. This isn't the nicest of positions. It is a stopover. D2 to D3. You can block off, put the brick in and go. But then as you go halfway through that run, you've got this tall tower that you can see. And that's the tall tower just to the right, just to the snake side rather, of the start gate. Attainable. And they're very, very likely to be there trying to contain D side early on. That said, if you make it in, does the reward supersede the potential risk? You can live to the snake in that it's a, a bigger Dorito. And if you need to tuck in, you can tuck in. And they've really got to come a long way up into, you know, level with you in your snake to really put that pinch on you. So what are, what are things like tape side? Tape side, you can see your D4 there. You can see their D4. Uh, in fact, da, 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 that's there. Yeah, that's their D3. You can see your D4, their D4 is blocked out. The bigger forward Dorito there is their D3, so you can see their D3, their D2, and their D1. You can wrap on that wedge. You can wrap on that temple. You can continue to wrap. You don't know what's at the brick. You could stay blind from the tower, unless they, the inside tower, unless it's super tall. 
Outside Tower has now got a shot on you. Wedge Across Field now has a shot on you. Sorry, that's Tall Cake, Snake Side, has a shot on you. And if you want to bump into D4, you bring into play. Let's get the best angle of that. Brick, Brick, and Snake 1. You can blind that the temples are on the back line if you want or block them rather than blind them but that snake's the one that could chew you up the most as well as the tall cake on the snake side now say you cross all of those lanes and people haven't cottoned on to what you've just done who can you kill yes you have a shot onto the back of that central complex in the snake. Again, though, if you don't hit them first ball, they can survive. Not only can they survive, but they can move to a position that you can't see them or have any awareness of what they've just done. They've just survived in your eyes. So this is one of those fields where having that first ball accuracy is really gonna pay off. If there is no snake, and you get tall in here, you got potential shots over the wedge and over the brick into the tall cake on the back line that you see just behind the those two towers. You got shots into the tall cake on the tape line, so the stop off into the snake. You got shots into the cans, you got shots into those temples on the back, so if you know that their snake is clear and you know that your team is doing work down that snake side and there's no immediate threat from, you know, the forward Ds, you maybe have a, a good opportunity to, to get higher in this D4 bunker and get shots over the brick, over the wedge and really put it on people when they're, where they're not expecting it from. Again, a lot of things have to happen for that to be a consistent reality. But if you've got a player, players on your squad who are wheeling and dealing snake side and making things happen, then potentially this is a very good opportunity for you to, to make some noise D side and keep that momentum going across field. So an option, multiple options, depending on how how confident you are and how much you want to experiment. Where I think this layout is going to get fun is when you move past D4. The shots you've got from D4, you can, you can block off the vast majority of these Doritos if you want to. If you need to is probably a better summation of this situation. If there is a, an opposing player in D1 two or three do you need to shoot them first to get another quick kill the answer is probably not unless they're doing something really unorthodox if they are unaware that you're there and they're playing inside you can probably get a, a sneak peek and get a quick kill from those temples if they are wrapping around the outside then you just need to be decisive and smart so if you go low and wrap on either of those temples that's a potential quick kill if you wrap on that pin uh, you know another quick kill if you catch the brick snoozing or the wedge snoozing another quick kill at this point you and let's say you've decided right i'm going to move you have an option you either move directly into this or that was a very poor illustration of me moving directly into that. Let's see if I can make this infinitely easier. You either move directly into this so that you give yourself a chance of making that move alive or you edge. If you edge there and kill their D3, if there's somebody rapping or unaware, you can edge or I'm just trying to find the spot how far you can edge if you go back a little bit actually so from your d4 
you edge and kill their d3. This is assuming, of course, that you've either killed the temples and the brick, or there's nobody there to kill or kill you. Looking for the spot, there we go. If you continue to edge, you can kill their d2. Sorry, d1. d2's in. So d2 set inside. So if you continue to edge, you've got a shot on their d1 here. They're snoozing. And again, you know, playing sloppy. Edge too far, though, and you see how that tall cake pops into play from behind the brick. So, okay, tall cake's not aware of you. Tall cake now knows your intentions. So at this point, unless you're super confident on your gun and your ability to kill that tall cake on the run, you probably want to haul ass and get in here. Now, again, you want to do it in an appropriate manner so that you are... You're giving yourself the best opportunity to live. So get in alive rather than die trying to get kills would be my advice. Once you're here, boom, 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 once you're here, you're safe from the snake side. Yes, this is obviously crazy bounce shot of wedges potential, but I think... Everybody's going to be more concerned about containing you and killing you as quickly and efficiently as possible. So you're more likely to get bunkered than you are to get a, you know, a thousand ball bounce shot, in my opinion. And this really is the wrap and go. You're not fussed so much about playing inside when all of the better angles are on the outside. Wrap, go, wrap, go. Nobody snake side can really control you because you should always have the upper hand. They never, and by that I mean, they never see you leave your bunker. If there's head down in the snake, they never see you leave. So by the time you've gone, you should have momentum and awareness. If here you recognize that there's a player in the snake, you probably want to go guns up at the snake at the towers at whatever you are unsure of in terms of there being an opposing player there once you're in their side of the field it's pretty straightforward to control the traditional element of the snake and by that i mean this area here that you can see on your screen that's snake one to two if we call snake one the the mini win on the tape line and snake two the actual knuckle on the snake they are early adopter snake bunkers if they move past that into that central complex you can't necessarily control that from here you don't you also don't know what's there so your most prudent plan of action is potentially going to be to negate whatever is there go past that as far as you can and assuming you know you've cleared back line have the luxury of them not being able to do anything about it as you go in for that buzzer even if there are players stuck in this snake complex the chance of them being aware turning getting a, a shot on you is minimal so It's a little bit of insight into the taking the width approach on the D side. Let's spin this round. Okay. So back at our start gate, if we're not going wide and we're playing this inside line of big brick, wedge on the 50, pins on the inside of the brick, and stand up can, what options do you have? Start with the, if we start with the small temple initially, small temple is a gateway for, we're not bothering going wide on the D side, but then we're gonna bump over to it as and when we can. It's a fakie in that 
people will people will forget you're there you can go there to try and kill their d1 you see the angle that you've got between the brick and the wedge there the inside of the wedge there is it a consistent shot for most players no in my opinion this is a this is one of those bunkers where I feel it's useful for getting players into the game. If you've got somebody who's struggling to make it out wide snake side for whatever reason, either, you know, they're just, things aren't clicking for them that day, whatever it is, this is actually a, a great bunker to boost someone's confidence of making it off the break alive, getting a gun up, rolling their trigger for a little bit, shooting half a load of them bumping out. It's a really, it's a utility bunker. In that sense is it the bunker you're going to win most points from on this layout no but it serves a great purpose of getting somebody getting a player into the game growing some confidence i think immediately if you said to somebody i want you to break to the brick on the 40 this guy most people would spend a lot of time looking at who can kill them on their way up stopping at this temple on the way to the brick is maybe a little reassurance of you know ah oh, i made it there so i can make it there that's how i would personally use it as you're coming up to this brick let's say you overcome that confidence hurdle as you're coming up here what i like is if you're smart you can choose who you block off In the sense of if you run wide you allow d1 to have a shot at you if you run slightly inside you allow d2 to also have a shot at you if you run super wide you block off d2 that's what i mean by you choose who you allow if you run super wide you also block off that front tower that you see there but the back tower can still shoot you I think that there will be there will be some really interesting choices made here in the sense of I think some players will go direct so some players will cut let's see they'll cut out this temple completely they'll run the line behind the can and their run will be very literally this route boom direct in here taking advantage of the fact that most opponents will not consistently be able to shoot a moving target that is moving at speed the real danger in that breakout is that tower the width on the snakes i can't really kill you consistently because they're not there to take advantage of that angle and that zone initially if you do that off the break it's really that tower guy now with that in mind that tower guy's window is dwindling so they really have passed the can in that by the time you're at the can or your run to the can rather the run to the can the tower guy isn't there to shoot you it's when you get past the can that the tower guy is there to shoot you you've also got that can shooting this tiny lane so you want to have the angle set so that you're actually crossing here i would say boom boom minimize that bam in they go now let's assume that you made it through faster than the tower guy could react when you're here your first shot is potentially that tall cake anybody or anybody delaying to the snake side so look at how big a window that is pin shields you completely from the tower so you got a really good lane to just concentrate and get your gun rolling on and the control of all too often i see somebody do all of this 
they'll get a phenomenal kill from somebody delaying out to that tall cake or trying to delay to the snake. As soon as they get that kill, they turn their head to communicate to their teammate, stop firing, stop on the trigger, so that lane that they were controlling subsides, and then the opposing team just take the opportunity to backfill it, refill it, etc. And, you know, you're back to square one. Somebody's made it through the lane. So this really is a, if you're going to play this role, be disciplined. Be disciplined in the sense of control that zone. Learn to communicate with your teammates so that you can, while still doing the job that you're tasked with. If you've got that kill and your requirement to control this zone is over, then that frees you up to look tape side. Initially tape side, the big, the big bonus is you're looking at your D4 and their D4. So you've got an element of control of the 50. If you edge or you wrap around your bunker, you've got their D2, which is a great shot. You're blind to their D3. And if you really go to town wrapping around, you've got their D1. So this could be the area in which you catch players snoozing. There's a potential to bump to the wedge. Even when you bump to the wedge, that brings the snake side really into play. So any subsequent move that you make runs the risk of also alerting their snake side that you're you're pushing hard from you know the 50 on the Dorito. So this wedge here is on the 50 line and you know again you've got great options to to wrap around the outside assuming you know there's no d4 threat etc etc i think one of the one of the big things that will happen is we're going to see some some d side craziness and weaving in this area so this area encompasses Let's just have a look. That's a great shot of it. This area encompasses the two bricks, the wedge on the 50, the D4s. So it's everything D3, D3 to D3. And we've got, what, two, four, six, seven big bunkers in that area. So, so much potential to go forward, probe, get a kill, come back, probe, get another kill, and really mop up and finish this point. Key, super key, not just in the sense of what you have to do proactively in this area to get kills, to generate kills from your players who reside in these bunkers, but also what you have to do proactively to control this area. And you can see that this tall tower here has the height. The tall tower between the two bricks that you see on your, your view. So this guy, oh, this guy here, between the pin and the brick, they've got the height. They've got the height to control these lanes. They also have the ability to, to live. If they play it low, you can see you can get all the way up to their d4 and you could still be battling with this guy admittedly a few things have to happen snake side for you to for that tower player that forward tower player to be able to live in that if the snake's really pushing down that bunker gets very small very quickly i think this is a, a pressure field Yes, there's a lot of potential for players to launch from this area on the D side that we're looking at here. Fact. Let's see if this works. Oh, goodness gosh. Okay, so we are looking at this area here. You can launch from a lot of these. And weave in here and it's a very happy area of the field as you can see it's also the potential 
Oh. I'm actually amazed that worked. All right, there we go. So just be cautious, just be cautious. And I really feel, in fact, let me go back here. Boom, boom, boom. I ought to give a shout out to Guns Up whilst we're doing this because without this technology, doing this type of video would be so much more laborious and boring. So huge shout out. Oh, this guy, this bunker here is the one that controls all of this area. A little happy area don't let them get happy play someone smart here play someone with height here as this is um so this is nxl europe layout this is prime territory for you know big guys with great shots big as in tall by the way height is a huge advantage playing this bunker i like it okay Let's see if we can get stuck into this snake side for you. Oh, right. I gotta get rid of my, there we go. Okay, bom, bom, bom. So let's go back to this start gate and work out some stuff snake side. Okay, at our start gate, you pretty much got one step and you can put that forward tower in the way of the home bunker trying to shoot back at you or trying to shoot you coming out wide. If you want to run up here, you obviously can and home can't shoot you. Home slash back center for Europeans. It's better. The cans in play in the sense of shootable just give them a bit more height oh probably too much so you can shoot over the pins at the can but then it's that wider tower that is putting a pinch on you and forcing you probably into switching this side and living now we already know look at those shots through that little happy place you got a lot of shots here so this is a real duke it out type of position I like this forward tower. I think that it's going to be, there's a lot of responsibility to playing this position. You got to be good on your gun off the bat because there's a great opportunity to churn some early kills from it. But then most importantly, mid point, mid match, you've got to be, you got to be smart and you got to be consistent. So this is about knowing your shots. If you're going to roll out D side and get that snapshot, you want to make sure that it's crisp, it's over the top. Or in fact, you know, so you can you can shoot those towers, the, the temples rather, you can shoot that D3. One thing I really like is that blind shot onto the D2. You can just see the tip of it over the corner of the block. I also like the blind shots over the block into that D1. So this to me is all about knowing your shots. You don't have to battle with the snake from this bunker. If you choose to battle with the snake from this bunker, you have probably just made your job harder and your life expectancy lower on field. I think this bunker can decimate D-side if it chooses to. But you've got to play it smart. Okay, back to our start gate. Survive the break. Survive the early lane. And we get into this can. We're not a giant though. So let's adjust that. Into this can. Got a good shot through the wedges. At the tall cake. Which is the, the artificial corner bunker if you like you gotta be slightly mindful that nobody's being silly on d side but the more you get into this bunker the less you have to worry about that and you still got your shot on that tall cake what i like about this and this particular shot is that you can see both sides and the top of that bunker 
So if players choose to leave it, whether that's coming forward to the snake, coming forward to the wedge, moving inside to a bunker unknown at that time, you have visibility and that's huge. Learn to use that. Learn to learn to appreciate as well. If you're the player playing the tall cake, know that this can concede. you. So be mindful of the fact that you've got to put this can in whatever you want to do. And that's huge from both aspects. Let's say we didn't stop at the can. And let's say we went to that tall cake. See, can can see me. Can can really see me now as you try and bump out. Damn, that can can still see me. So, what I like is if you're a smaller player, you can block off. If you, well, first of all, before we get to that, if you're sloppy and you run too wide, expect that D1 to chop you up. You can see the crossfield shots you've got there. And if you're loitering in this area in that, you know, you're you're hanging on to pulling the trigger rather than getting into your bunker alive. You deserve to be shot by that D1. You deserve to be shot a lot of times by that D1. You also run the risk if you go too wide, you mirror getting shots over that snake complex around the 50 and just hosing this area trying to get a cheap kill fishing with paint basically once you're in there you block off the ability for d1 to shoot you in the bunker you got to battle your mirror you got to battle that can you've potentially got to battle a giant in that tower and by giant i mean six footish that's that's plenty tall enough to shoot over that wedge into this area here this area of potential doom. I love the texture of this turf, by the way. Good job, guns up. Okay. As we move from the corner, the tall cake towards the next tall cake on the tape line, if that D1 can chop you up, D2's also got a shot, so you've got to be mindful of you got to be mindful of in fact that's d3 so just be cautious if you're going in there be cautious of the dorito who sees you leave calling to the next dorito up shoot that gap or whatever the appropriate call would be for your team just so that you know snake size looking to go this is a, a an area of the field that multiple guns can shoot from multiple angles so regardless of if you go wide regardless of if you go direct regardless of if you go high low etc there's more than one gun that can shoot you and this is this is a high risk move from the tall cake on the back line to the tall cake further forward you're almost better off going direct to the snake from this tall cake on the back line in that you removing the width stops the tower from getting a, a cleaner shot on you removing the width cuts down the time that the second dorito can shoot you because you you minimize that by having by adding speed the more steps you take the more speed you can potentially add so you cut out that there's the slow departure and you've built speed and you're in once you're in in fact before we get in let's assume you didn't go direct to the snake and you went to this tall cake on the tape line you got a tape battle a tape line battle so if you go too wide or too sloppy you could get pinched and you could get pinched by anyone on that tape line potential risk bigger risk as i see it is that d2 chopping you up from inside 
there's a there's a risk of d4 having a shot at you but they've got to be in d4 to have that shot so it all depends on the how mature the point is and when you've made the move in the point as to the likelihood of them being there being an opponent in d4 to shoot you moving round the outside of this tall cake to get into the snake looks a nightmare in that the central temple can shoot you the can's got a shot on you the tower's got shots on you the wedge has shots on you probably a spectator has a shot on you so many people can shoot you if you move on the inside you minimize the risk that central temple doesn't know you're making the move you can probably put the tower in and go so fast that they can't stop you it can certainly can't stop you because you're in which i like d side d2's got a little shot on you so d2 in wrap tower in go and nobody else should be able to pick you up fast enough for you to go now this is obviously with the caveat that there's nobody waiting at that at either of those wedges trying to just sucker you into making this move once you're in here just check something down here once you're in here i think you'll have slightly more space between this wind bunker and the beam of the snake than this initial layout shows now bear in mind you know this is done less than 24 hours before the layout was was live so oh sorry after the layout was live what it does show though is you've got cross field shots onto that d1 from snake two which is the first traditional knuckle in the snake really look in and you've got both sides of that temple so you've also got the can you've got the pins you've got a, a tiny glimpse of the top of d2 so yes there are shots from snake two how worthwhile i like as well by the way the fact that the wedge doesn't really control you once you're there what i'm interested in is look at these little corridors this is the shot where the players who are the most versatile in the sense of they recognize when it's appropriate to come to pop up from that little mini wind bunker and shoot over the top over that little knuckly bit at the top and shoot down this beam how many players will they catch sleeping how many players will they catch unaware of you know oh i didn't know that was on this is where hot yoga is going to pay off kids few blind shots from the snake three snake three level because you've got multiple bunkers i think it's going to be it's going to be interesting as well to see how teams really um designate names to these bunkers there are so many bunkers in such close proximity and let's just for a second go back to this layout see so let's look at what we've got Oh, I don't know. Oh. See if I can get some freestyle writing. There we go. Okay. All of these bunkers. So look, one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, ten, eleven. Eleven bunkers within that distance is crazy. Crazy exciting for what we can actually do okay 
I think there's a lot of potential here to get kills. I think there's some real sneaky kind of weighted out shots in the sense of a lot of these guys are going to wait at this wedge here and just see just see who actually does play too loose and get caught i think there'll be a lot of movement up and into this wedge on the outside and then round into their little mini win and again, most of this can be done, providing you ensure that, you know, you clear out any danger at these knuckles. Most of this can be done by actually coming in, playing smart. Let's see what crossfield shots you got. So really, the biggest danger is as you come around here, that D3, as you come in here, the brick, if the brick can you flatten the angle to live from the brick by getting into the wedge? Not really enough. Make it, make it a little bit worse. Can you jump this beam and get in here? Absolutely, and live. So there's always options. Let's see, let's get in that beam. Ooh. As you can see, right, let's go this way. There we go. So if the brick's a problem, you just got to be mindful that you might need to play it tape side. Bearing in mind that you've got to deal with whatever's in front of you as well. I actually think tape side is a better initial approach for anyone on the snake because it gives you it gives you more control. You've got control of even if I've gone too far and I'm exposed to a shot from the inside, at least I can live. And that at least I can live may be considering I've still got to battle someone directly in front of me. It's just that it's a lot better than I've still got to battle somebody directly in front of me and somebody across field who I can't live from. Now, once you move further up field tape side, yes, you've got to be mindful of the Ds. Um, D2, D3 especially can shoot you. Yes, that big wedge over here has great shots on you. Yes, the temples can shoot you. This is really the type of area where last player standing's in the can or either of the cans and you want to move up field relatively unseen, come around here, crack, get that kill, come up here, crack, get the kill on the forward can, make it into their corner, check off who's alive in there on the back line. And if anybody's, you know, this is one of the common errors I see as well. People do all the hard work to get to their opponent's back line and then they become obsessed with, right, I'm at this can and there's still somebody in D3 for me to shoot. Do you really need to shoot them? Or do you just need to start playing buzzer ball and get in there and hit the horn alive using this back center? This is the important thing. How can you learn to use their back center so that, you know, their player at the wedge, their player at the brick, whatever it may be, can't shoot you and you get that kill okay final little insight is going to be not the forward tower the front tower and that wedge front tower um sorry wide tower has the control of D1. I think that initially off the break, this is the roll of the dice for me. These are the lanes where you've got a lane coming directly at you from the front. You've got multiple lanes coming in from a cross field by this stage. Traditionally, you would send your fast guy on a route that takes them directly to the snake. So straight in here. They still have to cross these lanes. They still have to cross this big lane from that, excuse me, forward tower, which starts as soon as you pass this can. Bam, it can shoot you. Bang, 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 bang. That's a big lane. 
It's a big lane if you're fast. That's a huge lane if you if you've got my elusive speed. So I think we're going to see some very interesting early plays. I think this is a layout that teams need to. I'm considering how best to to phrase this. This is a layout where the team that learns the fastest will have the upper hand. It is another layout that seems very fitting with how they're going so far this year, where if you have the potential and the ability to play paintball, as in you can play what's in front of you, they can do something that you didn't expect and you can react, digest that and overcome it, you have such an advantage, it is unreal. This is not a layout where shooters are going to excel. In that, yes, they may get one kill off the break. But once they get one kill off the break, they're then out of their comfort zone. This is a layout where you have to, you've got to step up your game in practice. The sooner you embrace the opportunity to push yourself out of your comfort zone and learn, the more productive you are going to be and the greater the chance of you winning becomes you have to if you choose to acknowledge that and take it on board then you can start to work out yes there is a huge benefit to being in this wide tower how can we consistently get there yes there is a huge benefit to being in the snake how can we consistently get here Yes, there is a huge benefit to being up here in the wedge because of the control it gives you primarily. Big lanes that you can shoot, really big lanes that you can shoot. I mean, look at that. Complete control of everything coming into the snake as well as easy access into the forward part of the snake. Now, that's a very luxurious little bump. How can you consistently control it? And this is the layout that's going to push teams. I, that's what I, I like the most about this layout. This forces you to, to choose. It forces you to choose. Are we going to take a risk and assume we can get kills off the break and try and turn this into... A five on four, a four on three, a five on three even. Or are we going to accept that this will probably be a five on five off the break and we're going to do the wet work up close and personal? And I think this will be this will be a fascinating part of teams' evolutions throughout the season. This is a layout that's obviously going to be used in Prague. I believe it's going to be used at the CPPS in July. And teams now have, gosh, one, two, three, four weekends until the CPPS. Three weekends. And then it's the CPPS. Five weekends until Prague. So huge amount of practice time. Huge amount of time to learn if they choose to i'm super excited about this i think this is this is a really strong opportunity for players to develop i absolutely love that thank you for tuning in guys i hope you've enjoyed this if you have any questions about this layout please post up in the comments below and i will answer them all appreciate it again thank you very much